Hello everyone, welcome to our channel Foodologist. I am glad to tell you that Foodologist is now a team of three. So today's session would be taken up by Adishri Sanadya. Thank you Anusha. Now let us start with today's topic. Whenever we talk about food preservation, the first technique that strikes our mind is pasteurization or any other thermal processing technique which we have been using since ages, right? But these conventional techniques come with major constraints such as loss of volatile compounds, nutrients and flavors. So, owing to these losses, non-thermal or novel processing methods came into food industries to increase the production rate and consumers' acceptance. From now on, we are starting a series where we will be dealing with different non-thermal processing techniques. So, let us start our journey of no novel processing techniques with Chapter 1, that is High Pressure Processing. As the name suggests, in this technique, food is processed at an elevated pressure which may range up to 900 to 1000 megapascal with or without the addition of heat to achieve microbial safety of food products. So, we were conventional practices that preservation action was heat. Ki se ho tha. But in this technique, we will be using high pressure maintained at room temperature for the preservative effect. Therefore, it is also known as hyperbaric pressure, ultra high pressure, high hydrostatic pressure and pascalization. Now, how much pressure do we need? Generally, the pressures which are exerted at high altitudes and the deepest part of oceans which are in the range of 0.01 to 100 megapascal are considered as high. But when we consider food processing, the pressure which we are using are as high as 200 to 800 megapascal and even for inactivating milk enzyme the pressure may exceed 2000 megapascal but usually 600 megapascal is considered optimum for processing of commercial food products. Now let us discuss how HPP evolved over the course of time. So it was first used by Royer in 1985 to kill bacteria. Later in 1899, Haidt used it to see effects on milk, meat, fruits and vegetables which were subjected to 658 megapascal pressure for 10 minutes. Then over the course of time in 1990, the first commercial HPP based product was sold in Japan which included jam made from apple, kiwi, strawberry and raspberry in flexible sealed plastic packs. Now we will see which principles are involved in this technique. Ke involve hote hain. The first principle is isostatic principles which tell us that the pressure we apply throughout the sample will be uniform as we can see in the image. And this is the reason that the pressure we uh, process food will uniformly uh, cook hoga, uh, as unlike the uh, non-uniformity which is achieved during the processing by heat. Second principle is leach Italia principle जो कि बोलता है कि कोई भी process हो रहा होगा जो कि molecular level पे जैसे कि phase transition, molecular configuration और chemical reaction जैसे कि uh, gelatinization in starch ये जब हम pressure increase करेंगे तो वो reactions भी increase हो जाएंगी इसको हम इस example से समझते हैं imagine करिए आपके पास एक bag है और बहुत सारे कपड़े हैं और आपको packing करनी है और हर बार की तरह आपके कपड़े अभी भी बच गए हैं जबकि बैग आपका पूरा फिल हो गया है तो व्हाट विल यू डू यू विल अप्लाई प्रेशर एंड ऑन अप्लाइंग प्रेशर व्हाट वी विल अचीव इज कंप्रेशन इन द क्लोथ्स व्हिच विल लीड टू मोर स्पेस दिस इज द सेम प्रोसेस व्हिच इज ऑकरिंग हियर एज वेल ऑन अप्लाइंग प्रेशर ड्यू टू कंप्रेशन माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिजम्स माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिजम्स लूज देयर फंक्शनैलिटी ड्यू टू द रपचर इन सेल मेम्ब्रेन सेल वॉल एंड डिफरेंट ऑर्गेनल्स सच एज वैक्यूल्स तो इसी की वजह से जो माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिजम्स हैं उनके अंदर कंप्रेशन होता है और फिर जब फोर्स हटता है तब वह अपनी साइज तो रीगेन कर लेते हैं लेकिन फंक्शनैलिटी लूज कर देते हैं जिसकी वजह से फूड की क्वालिटी में कोई भी डिटेरियोरेशन नहीं आता है 
now let us talk about the major components of hpp so first is pressure vessel and its closure where we keep our food second is a pressure generation system as we can see in the picture there is hp pump for intensifying the pressure which we are applying then the third one is a temperature control device which is usually jacket because on increasing every 100 bar pressure there is also an increase in 3 degree temperature which we need to maintain therefore we will be using a jacket in order to control the temperature then there is a material handling system which is usually a basket where the food is kept then last is the pressure transmitting fluid which is generally water uh, however we can use other fluids such as silicon oil propylene glycol etc as well now let us talk about the process involved so the packaged food in sterilized container is loaded into the pressure chamber then the vessel is filled with water as we can see in the image and we will keep on filling the water until the desired pressure is achieved we will hold that food product in the pressure and depressurize the chamber and remove the processed food so this is the whole process involved and picture at the bottom depicts the basket how the food is carried in the basket and how the pressure is applied now there are two types of processing when it comes to HPP. Number one is in container processing and second is the bulk processing. In container uh, processing uh, allows the usage of any type of food and since we are using the processing after the food has already been packaged there is minimal risk of post processing recontamination whereas in bulk processing we can only use the pumpable foods or the liquids and the handling is comparatively easy in bulk processing. so this was all about hpp in the next part of this video we will be discussing the further more in-depth details of the topic so just stay tuned like subscribe and give your valuable feedback